Hello, guys. Ever found yourself stuck in decisions, unsure why you made a choice that left you scratching your head? Well, today will be an interesting experience as we discover the mysteries behind those confusing moments in your life. Buckle up, because this video, How to Break Free from 21 Common Thinking Errors That Hold You Back, will take you deep into the interesting world of human cognition. Ever wondered why you sometimes cling to ideas that might not be serving you well? Or why changing your mind feels like a battle? Well, we've got the answers. Today, we're not just talking about these thinking errors, we're decoding them, pulling back the curtains on why they happen, and most importantly, how you can overcome them. So, get ready to sharpen your mind, challenge your thoughts, and make better decisions starting today. But, you know, we're not just here to spill the secrets of the mind, we're building a community of curious minds. If you're as excited about this journey as we are, hit that subscribe button and join our community. We are already a community of 85,000 subscribers. All right, without further ado, let's get started with the first of 21 common thinking errors from the topic, how to break free from 21 common thinking errors that hold you back, and that is anchoring bias. This is an interesting thinking error that can significantly impact our decisions without us even realizing it. Imagine you're shopping for a new phone. As you walk into the store, the first model you see has a hefty price tag of $1,500. That initial number, $1,500, it's like a mental marker. Your brain latches onto it, and it becomes the anchor for your decision-making process. Here's where it gets interesting. Even if the next phone you look at is priced at $1,000, it suddenly seems like a bargain compared to that $1,500 anchor. You might feel inclined to choose it, thinking you're saving money, even though it might not be the best phone for your needs. Anchoring bias is like a mental shortcut that tricks us into relying too heavily on the first piece of information we receive. And it's not just about shopping, it influences important life decisions, too. For example, in salary negotiations, the initial offer can set the anchor. If you're offered a high salary right off the bat, it can influence your perception of what's reasonable, making it harder to negotiate for more. Imagine you're at an auction bidding on a piece of art. The auctioneer starts with a high opening bid. Your willingness to pay can get anchored to that starting point, making you bid more than you initially intended. So anchoring bias isn't just about shopping. It's about how our minds grab on to that first number we encounter, affecting everything from financial decisions to auction bids. Being aware of this bias can help you make more rational choices and avoid getting swayed by those initial anchors. All right now, let's move on to the next common thinking error from the topic, how to break free from 21 common thinking errors that hold you back, and that is confirmation bias. You've probably done this without even realizing it. It's like having a built-in yes-man in your brain, always nodding along to what you already believe. So picture this. You're in a friendly debate about your favorite sports team. You're passionate about them right now. When someone presents an argument against your team, what do you do? You might start digging up stats, articles, and tweets that support your side of the argument. You're not really looking at the big picture. You're looking for evidence that agrees with you. And it's not just in sports, it can happen in politics, religion, or even when you're picking your next binge-worthy show on Netflix. When you lean towards information that confirms what you already think, you're swimming in the deep waters of confirmation bias. Think about it like this. Imagine you're building a puzzle, and you've already decided that the picture should be a beautiful beach scene. Now, when you come across a piece that doesn't quite fit your vision, you might try to force it in, even if it doesn't belong. That's what confirmation bias does to your thoughts. It makes you twist and turn things to fit your preconceived notions. And guess what? It's not just you, it's a quirk of human nature. We're wired this way. We love being right, and our brains often prefer the cozy comfort of familiar ideas. But here's the thing, recognizing this bias is the first step towards breaking free from its grasp. So the next time you find yourself gathering evidence to support your beliefs, take a step back and ask yourself if you're really seeing the full picture. It might just lead you to some eye-opening discoveries. Now let's talk about the availability heuristic. 
It's like your mind's shortcut for making decisions based on what's most readily available in your memory. Imagine you're trying to decide if flying is safer than driving. If you've recently seen a plane crash on the news, that vivid and easily accessible information might lead you to think flying is risky. But here's the twist. The availability heuristic can sometimes lead us astray. The media tends to highlight unusual or dramatic events, making them seem more common than they really are. So while plane crashes are shocking, they're rare compared to car accidents, which are much less sensational but sadly more common. Let's connect this to our main theme, how to break free from 21 common thinking errors that hold you back. See how it sneaks in? Just like the availability heuristic can hijack your decision-making process, these thinking errors can sneakily hold you back in life. Now, back to our mental shortcut. When you're deciding, it's essential to be aware of the availability heuristic's influence. Take a step back, gather more balanced information, and remember that what's easily accessible isn't always the whole picture. By recognizing this, you're already on your way to breaking free from these thinking traps and making better choices in your life. Now let's talk about overconfidence, the next common thinking error from the topic, how to break free from 21 common thinking errors that hold you back. By the way, if you're enjoying the video so far and want more topics like this, comment the word more so I know. It's like that feeling you get when you're sure you know all the answers in a test, only to find out later that you missed a lot. We tend to overestimate our abilities and knowledge, thinking we're right, even when we might not be. Think of it this way. Have you ever been so certain about something, like picking the fastest checkout lane at the grocery store? You confidently choose a line, thinking it'll be the quickest, but then end up waiting longer than everyone else. That's overconfidence at play. We often believe our judgments and decisions are more accurate than they are, leading to surprising outcomes. This overestimation of our capabilities can be seen in everyday situations, too. For instance, when we're learning a new skill like cooking or playing an instrument, we might believe we've mastered it after a few attempts. However, it takes time and practice to truly excel. Overconfidence can make us take unnecessary risks or make hasty decisions without considering all the facts. Even some famous historical figures fell victim to overconfidence. Take Napoleon Bonaparte, for example. He was an incredibly skilled military strategist, but his overconfidence in his abilities led to his downfall. He made risky decisions, underestimating his opponents, which ultimately led to his defeat. So, being aware of our tendency to overestimate ourselves is crucial. It's not about doubting ourselves, but rather approaching situations with a healthy dose of humility and a willingness to learn. Remember, acknowledging our limitations can pave the way for better decisions and personal growth. Now, let's talk about hindsight. Bias the next common thinking error from the topic, how to break free from 21 common thinking errors that hold you back. Picture this. You're watching your favorite sports team lose a game, and suddenly you find yourself saying, I knew they'd be, they would lose from the start. That's the hindsight bias sneaking in. In simple words, hindsight bias is when we look back at something that's already happened and think, oh, I totally saw that coming. It's like playing Monday morning quarterback after a football game. You might say, I could have called that play. But in reality, it's much trickier when you're in the heat of the moment. Now... Let's put this bias into a real-life context. Think about a time when someone made a risky investment, and it turned out to be a big success. We often hear them say, I always knew it would pay off. But here's the thing, they might not have been so sure when they initially made that choice. In the world of technology, this bias affects how we perceive innovations like smartphones. After these gadgets become a part of our daily lives, we tend to forget how uncertain their success was in the beginning. Hindsight bias can make us feel like we saw it all coming, even if we didn't. So remember, it's okay not to be a fortune teller. We can't predict the future, but we can learn from the past. Now let's talk about loss aversion, the next common thinking error, from the topic how to break free from 21 common thinking errors that hold you back. This one's all about our fear of losing what we have, and it can really hold us back in life. Imagine you're at a casino and you've got $100. 
You're having a good time, but suddenly you start worrying more about losing that $100 than winning more. It's like our brains are wired to be extra careful about what we've got. In everyday life, you might see loss aversion when people hang on to things they don't need anymore, like old clothes or gadgets, just because they paid a lot for them in the past. It's like we're trying to make sure we don't lose out on our investment. And here's the kicker. This aversion to loss can stop us from taking risks, even when there's a chance for big gains. It's like we're playing it safe, but sometimes it means missing out on some exciting opportunities. Now, let's take a look at how this plays out in sports. Imagine a basketball player in a crucial game. They might be hesitant to take a risky shot, even if it's their best chance to win because they're afraid of missing and losing the game. It's a real-world example of how loss aversion can affect decision-making in the heat of the moment. So, remember, loss aversion can make us a bit too cautious. It's important to weigh the potential gains against the fear of loss and find a balance that helps us move forward in life. All right, now let's move on to the next common thinking error from the topic, How to Break Free from 21 Common Thinking Errors That Hold You Back, and that is Sunk Cost Fallacy. Imagine you're at a buffet and you've paid a hefty entrance fee. Now, even if the food isn't great, you might feel compelled to keep eating just because you've already paid for it. That's the sunk cost fallacy in action, throwing good money after bad. In real life, think about a project you've started, maybe a DIY home renovation. You've already invested time and effort, but as you go on, you realize it's not turning out as planned. Now, here's where the sunk cost fallacy can sneak in. Instead of cutting your losses and re-evaluating, you might think, I've come this far, I can't quit now. It's like refusing to let go of a sinking ship just because you've been on it for a while. Or consider a business venture. You've poured money into it and it's not showing any promise. You keep telling yourself, I can't back out, I've already spent so much. But in reality, continuing to invest in a failing project won't magically turn it around. The sunk cost fallacy is a trap we often fall into when we don't want to admit that our initial decision wasn't the best one. It's essential to recognize it, though, and be willing to cut your losses when necessary rather than throwing more resources into a lost cause. Remember, it's not about how much you've already put in. It's about making the right choices moving forward. Now let's talk about the halo effect. It's like when a person's goodness or talent shines so brightly that it casts a glow over everything else they do. Imagine meeting someone who's got a heart of gold and is also a whiz at their job. You might start to think that everything they touch turns to gold. Speaking of breaking free from common thinking errors, let's tie this back to our main theme. How to break free from 21 common thinking errors that hold you back. The halo effect can be one of those errors that sneaks up on us without us even realizing it. Think about celebrities, for instance. When we see someone famous doing remarkable things, it's easy to assume that they must be equally remarkable in every aspect of their lives. Their talents or philanthropic efforts can create this halo that blinds us to their flaws or mistakes. Now, here's the twist. Just because someone excels in one area doesn't mean they're infallible in everything else. It's crucial to remember that nobody's perfect. Understanding the halo effect is a step towards breaking free from these thinking errors that hold us back. So as we continue on this journey, recognizing these thinking errors is the first step towards living a more thoughtful and intentional life. Now let's talk about decision fatigue, the next common thinking error from the topic, how to break free from 21 common thinking errors that hold you back. Think of it like this. Imagine you've got a whole day ahead of you filled with choices, what to wear, what to eat, what to prioritize. As the day rolls on, you start feeling a bit worn out, right? That's decision fatigue creeping in. You see, our brains are like decision-making machines, and they're at their best when they're fresh and well-rested. But as we make choice after choice throughout the day, something interesting happens. Our mental energy starts to wear thin, and that's when decision quality takes a dip. Ever had those evenings when you're standing in front of the fridge, paralyzed by the endless options and eventually settling for something simple like cereal? That's a classic example of decision fatigue. When you're drained from making countless choices, you tend to opt for the easiest one, even if it's not the healthiest or most productive choice. In the world of celebrities, 
Think about someone like Oprah Winfrey. She's known for her busy schedule and the multitude of decisions she has to make daily, from her media empire to philanthropic efforts. Even someone as accomplished as Oprah can't escape the effects of decision fatigue. That's why many successful people implement routines and strategies to minimize decision-making in certain areas of their lives, allowing them to focus on what truly matters. So next time you find yourself struggling to choose between pizza or salad for dinner after a long day, remember it's not just you. Decision fatigue is a real thing, and being aware of it can help you make better choices when it counts the most. Now, let's talk about groupthink, the next common thinking error, from the topic how to break free from 21 common thinking errors that hold you back. Ever been in a situation where everyone in a group seems to agree on something, even if it doesn't make much sense? That's groupthink in action. It's like when you're brainstorming ideas with your friends and everyone starts agreeing with one person just to keep things harmonious, even if that idea might not be the best. Think about high school cliques. Everyone in a certain group might adopt the same fashion style or music taste just because everyone else is doing it. In this scenario, the desire for harmony and fitting in often overrides individual opinions or critical thinking. Groupthink isn't just limited to social circles, it happens in workplaces too. Imagine a team trying to solve a problem. If one person suggests a solution and everyone else immediately agrees without questioning or exploring other options, that's groupthink in action. It stifles creativity and can lead to poor decisions because no one dares to challenge the consensus. In the world of famous blunders, the Challenger Space Shuttle disaster is a prime example of groupthink. Engineers and decision makers ignored warnings about the launch, fearing their concerns might disrupt the mission. This tragic event showcased how groupthink can have serious consequences, even in matters of great importance. Remember, being aware of groupthink is crucial. It's about encouraging diverse opinions and valuing individual perspectives. So the next time you're in a group setting, embrace differences and don't be afraid to voice your thoughts. It might just lead to better, more thoughtful decisions for everyone involved. All right, now let's move on to the next common thinking error from the topic how to break free from 21 common thinking errors that hold you back. And that is self-serving bias. It's like having a built-in mechanism that boosts our self-esteem. Here's a simple example. Imagine you aced a test. You'd probably credit your intelligence and hard work for the great score. But if you didn't do so well, you might blame the tough questions or the noisy environment. In everyday life, we see the self-serving bias all around us. Think about a coworker who always takes credit for the team's success but points fingers at others when things go wrong. That's the bias in action. Or consider a sports star who believes their skills are solely responsible for a victory, ignoring the contributions of their teammates. It's not about being selfish. It's about protecting our self-image. We all want to feel good about ourselves, right? So the self-serving bias nudges us to view our successes as personal triumphs and our failures as external hiccups. But here's the twist. Recognizing this bias is a step toward better decision-making. When we're aware of it, we can be more objective, giving credit where it's due and learning from our mistakes. So the next time you're tempted to take all the credit or pass the blame, take a moment to reflect on the role the self-serving bias might be playing in your thinking. It's a small step toward more accurate self-assessment and improved relationships with those around you. Now, let's dive into Availability Cascade. Picture this. You stumble upon a catchy headline online, and it starts circulating like wildfire on social media. The more you see it, the more you believe it must be true. That's the availability cascade at work, and it's one of those thinking errors that can really trip you up. You see, availability cascade is like a rumor gone wild. It's when an idea or belief becomes so ingrained in our minds that we start accepting it as gospel truth. And guess what? It happens all the time not just on the internet, but in our daily lives, too. Imagine you're at a party and you hear someone mention a particular diet that promises miraculous weight loss. Soon everyone seems to be talking about it and you begin to feel like you're missing out on a golden opportunity to shed those extra pounds. That's an availability cascade in action. Now let's tie this back to our main theme. You're probably wondering, 
How does breaking free from these thinking errors help me? Well, here's where the title of our video, How to Break Free from 21 Common Thinking Errors That Hold You Back, comes into play. You see, by understanding these cognitive traps and learning how to navigate around them, you can make better decisions, avoid falling into the same old mental pitfalls, and ultimately break free from the limitations they impose on your life. So, whether it's availability cascade, confirmation bias, or any of the other thinking errors we've discussed, recognizing them is the first step towards overcoming them. It's your ticket to clearer thinking, better choices, and a brighter future. All right, now, let's move on to the next common thinking error from the topic, How to Break Free from 21 Common Thinking Errors That Hold You Back, and that is Fundamental Attribution Error. Sounds a bit complex, right? Don't worry, it's simpler than it sounds. This thinking error happens when we underestimate the impact of external factors and overestimate the influence of someone's character when trying to figure out why they behave a certain way. Think about it this way. Imagine you're stuck in traffic and someone cuts you off abruptly. Your immediate reaction might be to assume they're a terrible driver or a rude person. But here's the twist. What if they were rushing to the hospital because a loved one was in an emergency? Suddenly, their behavior takes on a whole new meaning, right? This error is something we all encounter in our daily lives. You might judge a coworker as lazy because they missed a deadline without considering that they had a family emergency. Or you might see a friend as overly competitive when, in reality, they're just passionate about their hobbies. In the world of sports, this error often crops up. Imagine watching a football game, and a player makes a crucial mistake. It's easy to label them as clumsy or ineffective, but what if they were playing through an injury or dealing with personal problems? So the next time you find yourself quick to judge someone's character based on a single action, remember the fundamental attribution error. It reminds us that there's usually more to a person's story than meets the eye. Keep an open mind, and you might discover a whole new perspective on the people around you. Now let's move on to the next common thinking error from the topic, How to Break Free from 21 Common Thinking Errors That Hold You Back, and that is the Dunning-Kruger Effect. This is a fascinating one, guys. It's all about how some people with not-so-great skills in a particular area tend to think they're way better than they actually are. Imagine your friend who's just picked up a guitar. They've strummed a few chords, maybe played Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, and suddenly they're convinced they're the next rock star sensation. That's the Dunning-Kruger effect in action right there. You know what? We've all been there. Think back to a time when you tried something new like cooking a fancy dish or playing a sport. At first, you thought you were nailing it, but as you gained more experience, you realized there was a whole lot more to learn. That's the Dunning-Kruger effect taking you for a little ride. Now let's bring in an example. Ever heard of American Idol? You know, that TV show where people audition for singing and some are fantastic, while others, well, let's just say they're a bit delusional about their vocal talents. These contestants who can't quite carry a tune often illustrate the Dunning-Kruger effect beautifully. They genuinely believe they're the next big music sensation, despite all evidence to the contrary. But here's the thing, guys. As you gain more knowledge and experience in a particular area, you tend to become more aware of your limitations. It's like climbing a mountain. The higher you go, the more you see. And the more you realize how much there is left to climb. So the next time you encounter someone who's absolutely convinced they're an expert in something they've just started, remember the Dunning-Kruger effect. And hey, if you catch yourself feeling like a know-it-all after mastering something new, take a step back and remember that there's always more to learn. That's the beauty of growth and self-awareness. Now let's talk about framing effect, the next common thinking error from the topic, how to break free from 21 common thinking errors that hold you back. This one's like wearing different glasses when you're looking at the same thing. Ever notice how the way something is presented can completely change your perspective? That's the framing effect in action. Imagine you're at a doctor's office and they tell you about a surgery. If they say, this procedure has a 95% success rate, you might feel pretty confident about it. But what if they say, there's a 5% chance of failure? 
Suddenly, it might sound riskier even though it's the same thing. Here's an example. Imagine you're shopping online and you see a product described as 90% fat-free. That sounds pretty healthy, right? Now imagine you see the same product described as 10% fat. It's the same thing, but the framing makes you see it differently. In politics, framing is a big deal. Politicians and pundits often use this technique to make their arguments more convincing. They'll present an issue in a way that suits their agenda. For instance, they might frame a tax proposal as tax relief to make it sound positive or as tax burden to make it sound negative. Framing is all about how you paint the picture, and it can affect your decisions more than you might think. So next time you're faced with information presented in a certain way, take a moment to think about how the frame might be influencing your perspective. It's a simple shift in presentation that can change the way you see the world. Now let's move on to the next common thinking error from the topic, How to Break Free from 21 Common Thinking Errors That Hold You Back, and that is the planning fallacy. This is like that sneaky friend who always underestimates the time it takes to finish something. It's when we think a project will be a piece of cake, costs will be low, and everything will go as planned. But in reality, life doesn't work that way, right? Think about it in terms of your everyday life. Have you ever tried to tackle a home improvement project, like fixing a leaky faucet or painting a room? You might start with grand ideas, thinking it'll only take a couple of hours and cost a few bucks. But as you get into it, you realize it's not as simple as it seemed. You need more time, more tools, and maybe even some professional help. In the business world, companies can fall into this trap too. They start a new project with optimistic timelines and budgets, thinking they've got it all figured out. But as they dive in, they discover unforeseen challenges, unexpected expenses, and delays that throw their initial plans out the window. Even on a grander scale, think about space exploration, NASA. The people who send astronauts to the moon and beyond have sometimes underestimated how long and how much it'll take to get those missions off the ground. What might have seemed like a straightforward mission on paper turns into a complex puzzle in reality. So the planning fallacy is basically our tendency to be overly optimistic when it comes to planning. We forget about potential hiccups, complications, and the fact that life has a way of throwing curveballs our way. It's a reminder that when you're planning something, whether it's a weekend project or a big business endeavor, it's always a good idea to factor in some extra time and resources for those unexpected twists and turns. Because in the real world, things rarely go as smoothly as we hope. All right now, let's move on to the next common thinking error from the topic, How to Break Free from 21 Common Thinking Errors That Hold You Back, and that is recency bias. You know, it's that little quirk in our thinking that gives too much importance to recent stuff. Imagine you're picking a restaurant to grab dinner with your friends. If you saw a few positive reviews online for one spot and some not-so-great ones for another, you might lean towards the one with the fresh thumbs up, right? Well, that's the recency bias in action. It's like our brains have this what's happening right now matters most sign hanging over them. In everyday life, recency bias can play tricks on us. Think about your exams. When you're studying, the stuff you've reviewed just before the test might feel way more important than the stuff you learned weeks ago. So, you focus on the recent stuff and, oops, overlook some crucial material. Now, let's step into the world of sports. Imagine a baseball game where a player has hit a bunch of home runs in the last few games. The fans might start thinking, wow, this guy is on fire. They might even forget that he had a slump earlier in the season. That's recency bias clouding judgment. And in the world of finance, investors often get swayed by recent market trends. If stocks have been rising for a while, people may think the good times will never end. But history tells us that what goes up usually comes down eventually. So it's important to be aware of recency bias when making investment decisions. So there you have it. Recency bias in simple words. Remember, while it's natural for our brains to focus on what's happening lately, being aware of this bias can help us make more balanced and informed decisions in various aspects of life. All right, now let's talk about the status quo bias. Imagine you're in a cozy, familiar spot, your favorite seat on the couch, watching your favorite TV show. It's comfy, right? You don't want to move. 
even if there's a more comfortable chair across the room. Now, how does this apply to your everyday life? Well, the status quo bias is all about our preference for things to stay the same. We tend to stick with what we know, even if change might lead to something better. Think about it in terms of your job. You might be in a position that's not making you happy, but the thought of changing careers seems daunting. It's that fear of the unknown, that resistance to change, that's the status quo bias. But here's where the title of our video, How to Break Free from 21 Common Thinking Errors That Hold You Back, fits right in. Because the status quo bias can indeed hold you back from exploring new opportunities and pursuing your true passions. Imagine if you dared to break free from that comfortable but unfulfilling job. You might discover a career that brings you joy and satisfaction, and it could lead to a much happier life. So in this case, acknowledging and challenging the status quo bias can be a game changer. But don't worry, it's not just you. Many people find themselves in this spot, often thinking, why fix what isn't broken? Well, our brains are wired to prefer familiarity, but sometimes taking that leap into the unknown can lead to incredible growth and fulfillment. So remember embracing change, even when it seems scary, can lead to exciting new opportunities and experiences. And breaking free from the status quo bias is a crucial step toward living a more vibrant and fulfilling life. All right, now let's move on to the next common thinking error from the topic how to break free from 21 common thinking errors that hold you back and that is social proof. Ever found yourself doing something just because everyone else is doing it? That's social proof in action and it happens all the time, trust me. Think about the last time you were in a crowded restaurant with a line snaking out the door. What's your first thought? This place must be amazing. Look at all these people waiting. That's the magic of social proof right there. You see, as humans, we often take cues from those around us. It's like following the crowd is hardwired into our brains. So when you see a packed restaurant, you naturally assume that it's because the food is fantastic. You want to be part of the experience, right? Now, it's not just about food. Social proof plays a big role in the decisions we make every day. Let's talk about shopping. Imagine you're online checking out reviews for a product you're interested in. If you see lots of positive reviews, you're more likely to hit that buy now button. Why? Because all those reviews are like a virtual crowd telling you, hey, this product is legit. Even on social media, when you notice a post with tons of likes and shares, you're more inclined to engage with it. Why? Because others have already given it their stamp of approval and you don't want to miss out. Celebrities and influencers use social proof to their advantage, too. Ever notice them endorsing products or services? It's not just because they like it. It's because they know that when they say this is awesome, their massive following is likely to jump on board. So the next time you find yourself influenced by what everyone else is doing, remember, it's just your brain responding to the powerful pull of social proof. It's a little nudge from the crowd, guiding your decisions, whether you're choosing a restaurant, buying a product, or scrolling through your social feed. Now let's talk about the just world hypothesis, the next common thinking error from the topic, how to break free from 21 common thinking errors that hold you back. It's like this idea that the universe is a cosmic scorekeeper, making sure that good deeds are rewarded and bad deeds are punished. Sounds comforting, right? Imagine you're watching a movie where the hero saves the day and the villain gets their comeuppance. It's a classic example of the just world hypothesis in action. We love stories like these because they reaffirm our belief that justice will always prevail. In our everyday lives, we might catch ourselves thinking this way too. If someone we know lands a fantastic job or wins the lottery, we might attribute it to their hard work or good character. It feels good to think that the world is fair and that good things happen to good people. But here's the twist. The world isn't always as just as we'd like it to be. Bad things happen to good people. And sometimes not so nice people seem to get away with it. It's a tough pill to swallow, but acknowledging this reality can help us see the world more clearly. Think about it in terms of sports. Even the most dedicated athletes can face injuries that jeopardize their careers despite their hard work and determination. 
The just world hypothesis can make us overlook the randomness and unpredictability of life. So why is it essential to understand this thinking error? Well, when we believe in a perfectly just world, we might be less likely to help those in need because we assume they somehow deserve their troubles. It's essential to recognize that life's challenges don't always reflect a person's character or actions. It's okay to appreciate stories where justice prevails, but we should also remember that life's narrative is often more complex. By letting go of the just world hypothesis, we can better empathize with others and navigate the ups and downs of life with a more realistic perspective. Now let's move on to the next common thinking error from the topic, how to break free from 21 common thinking errors that hold you back. And that is endowment effect. You know that feeling when you own something and suddenly it becomes super precious to you, almost like it's the crown jewel of your collection? Well, that's the endowment effect at play and it's pretty darn common. Imagine you have an old teddy bear you've had since you were a kid. You know, the one with the missing button eye and the stitches holding it together. Now, if someone offered to buy it from you, you'd probably say, no way. You've become emotionally attached to it, and you value it more just because it's yours. In the world of buying and selling stuff, the endowment effect can be a real game changer. Let's say you're at a garage sale, and you spot a vintage record player. The seller, knowing about this bias, might jack up the price because they know that once you touch it, once you feel like it's yours, you're more likely to shell out some extra cash. And have you ever noticed how hard it is to let go of clothes you haven't worn in years? You might think, I haven't worn this shirt since the 90s, but I can't part with it. That's the endowment effect whispering in your ear, making you value it more simply because it's in your closet. So what's the lesson here? Recognizing the endowment effect can help you make more rational decisions when it comes to buying, selling, or even decluttering your space. Just because something's in your possession doesn't mean it's worth a fortune. Keep a clear head, and you'll be better equipped to navigate the world of possessions. That was quite a journey through the intricate world of thinking errors that might be holding you back. We've explored the impact of these biases in various aspects of life, from business to entertainment and even technology. Now remember, awareness is the first step towards breaking free from these cognitive traps. So keep questioning your thinking, stay curious, and don't be afraid to challenge your own biases. This video is for educational purposes only and does not constitute investment advice. It is important to conduct thorough research and consult with financial professionals before making any investment decisions. I recommend you watch the next video in our series. Don't hesitate to share this video, subscribe to our channel, and share your thoughts in the comments section. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.